Betrayal of Faith and Gods. Meanness of Human Nature. I have a question about reincarnation. Suppose we had an agreement with certain forces and gods in a previous life. But in the process of living a next life we develop our consciousness, change our views, acquire some other values, and make an agreement with other gods. In that case, what should we do with the previous agreements? If these agreements have not been cancelled, you must fulfill and break them. What if they contradict each other? In that case, one of them would betray the other. And you will be considered the betrayer, because it all happened on your initiative. So there would be a direct confrontation between one force and another. Exactly, it would be a direct confrontation between the forces, and believe me, this situation happens quite often. For example, a person came through a Christian channel. During his lifetime he changed his worldview, realized that the Christian channel was too limited for him, and transitioned to paganism, but he did not close his debts to Christianity. And how should one close the debts? Is it possible to do this without hurting oneself and in a delicate way? I'm afraid you won't be able to do it in a delicate way. It all depends on the price of the issue. If you have ever summoned forces, asked them for help, and received it, but never paid for that help, you must pay them back. And since the agreement is broken on your initiative, it means that you will pay the price that the other party charges you. You will pay with your time, with your money, with your health, with whatever you have. You will buy yourself out of this channel, out of this system, in order to transition into another. However, there is another option if the other force is so interested in you that it takes it upon itself to buy you out. And when you transition to another system, your debt is transferred to that force. But the debt remains anyway. The debt to other forces still remains unpaid. And they will have their own price for how much it will cost you. Christianity, as far as I know, puts the highest price on everything it does. A very high price indeed. With the pagan gods, the relationship is more transparent, at least they tell you right away that this will cost you so much, that you have to do this, bring that, and so on. Everything is transparent and obvious. While Christianity never directly tells you what to do, they say, pray and believe, and maybe you will find out eventually, or maybe you will not. And that was precisely what happened. People from paganism transitioned to Christianity without paying debts to their own gods. They received a certain seal and had to pay the debts by reducing their rights. The pagan god simply took back all of the rights that they had given to the humans. So man came to Christianity as a miserable, powerless creature, as a servant of God, as a thrall. What about the fact that we were baptized right after birth, without our permission? We've been attached to a certain egregore, and now when we transition to another system, we have to buy ourselves out. Yes, you will definitely have to buy yourself out, that's the issue price. But you probably did the same to your children in a previous life. There is always a quid pro quo. Actually, your parents washed away many sins by bringing their baby to church. They pay with the soul of someone who doesn't belong to them, who is only related to them by blood, and that's a pretty good payoff. This is not some medieval indulgence where you pay a few gold coins and buy the right to commit sins for a year. This is a very significant payoff. A child who is born into this world and has a part of the consciousness of a particular god is automatically attached to the Christian egregore. A newborn child remains close to its mother for up to seven days after birth, it belongs entirely to its family, it is its flesh and blood, in fact it is not even recognized as a person from the point of view of social and Christian norms. It will be considered a person later, at least nine days after birth. According to pagan tradition, after nine days a child went through a naming ceremony. A father took the child on his knee and named him such and such, thus confirming his status as a member of the clan. In Christianity, it is customary to baptize a child no later than the 40th day after birth. The child is still flesh from the flesh of its father and mother, and they actually pay with a piece of their flesh. And only then does the child get the right to be a person. 
That is what Christianity does, it gives the right to be recognized as a person by acting through the naming of the child. And from that moment on, the personality of the child, and therefore his soul, belongs to that egregore only. And the egregore will cherish him until a certain time but then he will have to buy himself out. And it doesn't matter that he didn't know, it doesn't matter that his permission wasn't asked. No one was obligated to ask the child's permission, because according to the law, a child couldn't be an independent person. Today, secular laws say that a child is recognized as a person after birth. As soon as he makes his first cry, he is considered a person. At least in an atheist environment some human rights have emerged. And before that, before the revolution, a mother could kill her own child and not be punished for it. None of these cases have even been investigated. Yes, one baby died, but how many babies die out there? A lot. But if a child had already been baptized, such a mother could be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Hence the conclusion, if you want to break an agreement with some force and make one with another, do it maturely. Leave everything in the past, everything your parents did. The fact that they didn't ask your permission doesn't take away the effects, doesn't imply anything, and doesn't justify the results, so just forget about it. Recognize and take into account the benefits you have received from this channel from birth to today. You will be billed and you must pay. And with a pure heart, like a warrior who is free from all obligations and debts, you will transition into the system that you have chosen by an act of will. And believe me, a person who has made a conscious choice is much more valuable to the system than someone who was dragged into it as a little unconscious baby. One must always make a conscious choice. Such a person is nicer and more pleasing to the gods. And trust me, if they set a task for a person, it will be a worthy one, and not the task of giving alms to beggars on Easter. As if that alone is enough to fulfill one's task in life, and nothing more is needed. What a shame it is to have such a purpose in life.